Hey everyone, it's Ket. Um, back again. I don't know uh, how many of you guys have checked out my long rambling video uh, intro that is up on the Google Classroom, but I will attempt to make this video uh, slightly shorter and less rambly. Um, and what I'm going to talk about today is basically just your first assignment, uh, which has been up in the Google Classroom for about a week. But um, yeah, uh, since it officially the class officially starts Tuesday, I wanted to sort of talk about it some more and to hopefully clarify uh, any questions before they might pop up for you. Just I'm just going to go through the assignment sheet and talk a little bit about my thinking behind the assignment, what your expectation, you know, what my expectations are for the assignment, and yeah, just to sort of talk about where I'm at with it. And um, I chose to focus on setting the stage for the first assignment just because, um, well, A, I think it's a very important skill in terms of how everyone is constantly, no matter what project they're working on, uh, needs to bring a reader into their story and needs to keep doing that. <laughs> really, at the start of each scene, there's a, there's an element of re you know just setting things out and establishing shot. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily need to take the form of kind of strict cinematic rules, but there are there are different ways in which you might set the tone or feeling uh, and setting for a given scene. And since I'm coming really fresh, I'm right now, as I'm recording this, uh, I'm, I'm about halfway through reading your thesis packet. So I see that there's a variety of stories and obviously there's going to be a variety of approaches to an assignment like this. Um, but just as since I'm a new reader, a fresh reader, I thought it would be cool to sort of give you guys the task of, okay, well, I have a new reader with a fresh set of eyes. How do I introduce them to my world and my story? It doesn't have to be chapter one, page one of your thesis. Obviously, I've looked through, there's so many of you have so much work that's already been done. But, you know, maybe for a scene, for a chapter, something that you're eager to get to. Or alternately, if there is an early, an earlier scene that you've already, uh, that's already gone through critique that you already have planned revisions for that you might want to reapproach for a new draft. This could be, this could be it. Um, so, uh, I know that in my assignment sheet, I did, you know, I pulled up a couple of very, uh, uh, examples of a couple of disparate artists, uh, with their approaches. I'm a big, uh, fan of Berlin of Jason Lutz. Uh, and you, I put up that page of all those very nice, slow aspect to aspect transitions. But then on the other end, you have Kirby, and you can just kind of throw everything at the reader really, uh, really fast. You can just hit them over a head with a, you know, with a sack of hammers, uh, and and that can have the desired effect that you might might be going for as well. It really can totally depend on the demands of your individual narrative and the, the feelings of the the scene that you're trying to set. So uh, there's definitely no formula for this, and. Really, I want to keep these themes fairly loose for the assignments because it's really just an avenue for you to get to a part of your thesis that you need to get to and that you're excited to work on, right? So uh, try on an individual basis to meet those criteria for yourself, right? You are working on the project that you've set yourself up, that you're devoting this year to, right? That you've already been devoting time to. Uh, so far in this program. You're giving yourself this this time, this opportunity to work on this comic. This is, I'm hoping for each and every one of you, this is your dream comic, something that you really want to get to. So where is there a place? Yeah, if, if you want to think about it in a concrete way, is there a location? Is there a place? Is there a scene that you're really psyched about? You can't wait to draw. It's been in your imagination. It's been percolating for a long time. This assignment is an opportunity to get there and to really describe that and to introduce your readers and your characters to that scene and try to explore it. Um, so that's my that's my thinking behind the assignment. And uh, if you have any concerns about those uh, those goals, those this sort of stated intent, um, maybe I've had some students, uh, you know, worry about fitting their thesis to an assignment. 
you can uh, talk to me directly. You can hit me up with an email. And I'm already in the process of uh, scheduling the, the small group video chats where, I'm, where so far I've already uh, felt like I've gotten to know the individual projects and artists better. But yeah, if, if you want to talk about that, you can always hit me up. Um, but moving on to the next sort of um, uh, just the, the nitty gritty of the assignment, it's going to be six to 10 pages that are due in two weeks. So due Tuesday, September 17th. Um, and yeah, the, the really important thing, uh, I'm really not sure sort of how that six to 10 fits with, uh, other, uh, assignment requirements, uh, other assignments that you've had in other mentored studios. But as I stated in my sort of intro video, my goal for you all this semester is really to generate new material, to generate pages for your thesis. And so I want to have at least six. I feel like that's a... Any less than that, you're talking four or five, and, and it's such a little bit of story, and I'm more concerned with seeing your story grow and adding to that page count and giving you feedback so that then you can whittle it and edit it and tighten it, tighten it up for that final form in the thesis in the spring. Um, and with that in mind, it's very important that you keep this stuff in a, in a, in a format in which you are comfortable editing. Uh, and so I've asked for loose pencils, right? So I don't need everything to be perfectly rendered, does not need to be inked, does not need to be colored. What I want are, is uh, I want to be able to identify the characters, like the basic who's who, you know, the motion, the emotion of the characters, and enough about the setting, right? Um, there can be shortcuts, right? They're, they're, uh, it, it can be sloppy if you need to sort of have extra little notes about, oh, uh, I know sometimes I do this for myself, right? If, I'm, if I have a, a particularly loose thumbnail, I wrote a note in the margin being like, bloodshot eyes, you know? Uh, I know that Matt has had a lot of you guys read uh, Dash Shaw uh, and Bottomless Belly Button you see in, in Dash's effects. He will sometimes, put, you know, put loud noises or whatever, right? Um, and so if necessary, you can sort of do cheat sheet, uh, things like that, uh, to, to communicate something that you're going to more fully execute in the, the final illustrations, but baseline, you need the, the baseline pictures and words that are going to be in the scene. Yes. Words too. Um, I, I had made that not explicit, uh, for previous assignments, you know, other years and then people were like oh I didn't know you wanted me to put in word balloons it's like yeah I want to read your comics which means everything so even though the focus is on setting it still is only focusing on setting in the context of your story so I need all I need a loose version of all of those moving pieces of your comic which means words and pictures and uh, and we'll get through it right so that's a batch of six to ten I've totally had um, you know, I've had students who are always down for 10. I've had students who are always down for six. It might be based on the demands of the scene. You know, maybe the scene that you're working on is exactly seven pages, in which case I would say, draw a loose version of those seven pages. You know, what, you know, whatever's going to, you think, whatever you think is going to give the reader the best overall impression of a, of a batch of pages that fits as a scene. Right, um, and so it's it's a little bit of a, of a push and pull, right? Because um, it's a it's a decent amount of work that I'm asking for you, but but I am also encouraging you to keep it loose and to not stress out on the, the little details of having it be perfectly cross hatched or anything like that. Um, and something that I'm going to do, I still have to sort of compile the pages, but I was going to uh, share with you uh, some of my loose pencils, um, share some of my process to sort of see the kind of level uh, that I find acceptable. And and you individual artists, uh, you know, mileage may vary. And, and some of you might opt to be like, oh, well, I don't want to do something that loose. <laughs> Maybe some of you will be like, oh, I don't want to do something that tight. But I guess, I guess we'll find out. Um, you know, we're sort of learning as we go. 
from each other in that in that aspect. But I will I will share a little bit of that just so uh, you all have a clear idea of what I think of as as loose pencils or what work what what loose pencils look like for me. Anyway, um, let me just move ahead and. Uh, this is all in your syllabus and it's going to be reaffirmed on the individual assignment sheets and I will also remind you in emails. So th all this information is going to keep coming and um, you, you won't have, <laughs> you won't be able to forget. Um, but all the assignments, the four assignments leading up to the, the final fifth assignment, uh, again, as I mentioned in the intro video, it's the, this semester is going to be uh, five assignments four loose pencil assignments leading up to the fifth assignment, which is going to be a revised, uh, a revision and a fuller execution of uh, previous, previously submitted pages. Um, and the deadline for the first four is two weeks. So you have two weeks to give me six to 10 pages. Um, week, week feedback is then due the following Tuesday. So then you have a week gap uh, in which you will be expected to give your feedback on Wake and give um, your summary feedback. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that just so that we're once again clear. It's all in the syllabus, but once again, here I am at 11 minutes and we're getting to the rambly part. I'll try to still have it be under half an hour. Um, <laughs> so uh, your assignment's due in two weeks. After that, you have a week to uh, give your, your Wake feedback. Because your class is big, I've split up the wake feedback, right? So if you check on the Google Classroom, I have a, a section for summary feedback sheets. Um, and there's a group A and a group B, alphabetical. Um, for this first assignment, whatever group that you're in, those are the only uh, student assignments that you are going to comment on and give wake feedback for. It's the only ones you're required to anyway. You could have a buddy who you just are like, oh, I really do want to read and comment on this. If you want to go above and beyond, you're welcome to, but I recognize that everyone's got a lot on their plate and grinding through, uh, believe me, because I have to comment on, <laughs> on, on all 14. Uh, and I also have other jobs <laughs> that I'm doing. So I, I know that it's a lot of work, but I want uh, students in their thesis year to, to mostly be able to focus on their own work and I will shuffle up those groups. So for this first assignment, if you're in group A, you comment on everyone else in group A. And on that summary feedback sheet, you include that at the end of your set. And wherever your name is, that's where I want you to leave a separate annotation where you give about a page worth of more in-depth uh, analysis. Um, instead of the sort of micro, hey, there's a panel here, or a panel there, a drawing issue, placement issue. Um, sort of address those pages as a whole and the, the as a story and maybe how that's working for you, what you see for the story um, and, and, and bring into account the fact that you've been reading your cohort's work for over a year now. And so you're bringing that uh, to your analysis and, and what you already know about the individual thesis projects and how they've grown. Um, one thing I'd like you to do as well is uh, on your own work is just to leave two annotations of yourself. And this is just a little, it, it can help guide your feedback specifically, you know? So when you submit your uh, work uh, to Wake, you know, first thing you do after, you, after it's uploaded is go through and find a spot where you just feel like you crushed it, where you just did, did great, it came out the way you wanted, it could be an aspect of the timing, it could be the drawing, whatever it is, just a part of the story, a bit of dialogue that you really like, um, anything where you just feel proud and you would give it a thumbs up, give a little annotation, give yourself a gold star in that place. And then likewise, I want you to find one place where you struggled, where you had questions, if you weren't sure if you had the right way to approach that story, or if you're looking for a specific bit of feedback from the cohort or from me, find that spot, right? So that could help you um, get the specific, you know, get the feedback that's going to help you the most or that you, that you find the most pressing. So I think that, I hope that that will be helpful for you all. All right, so I think that that's all the, I have to reopen my PDF. 
Um, those are the main aspects of the comics aspect of your submission. And then finally, if you go down, the last thing I have in your assignment sheet is thesis worksheet number one, the focus sentence. So <laughs> as, as I've mentioned briefly in the, um, the intro video, um, alongside your comics assignments, I'm going to hit you with these thought exercises, these writing exercises that should not take a lot of time. And I don't really want you to worry about them until you're in that comment week. So really, for the, the two weeks you get the assignment, I want you to be just in on your story. When you sort of come out of that comics making two week binge, sort of back up, take, <laughs> take a walk around the block, you walk the dog, or I, I walk my dog. Um, and you look at your cohort's work, and I want you to look at your own story and to, sort of through the filter of these exercises. And these can just help you reframe the story, help you refocus the important elements of your story, and um, hopefully make it more clear for you. And these exercises are going to build in such a way that I, I really hope and the aim is to um, just completely uh, clarify and refocus um, your intentions, the goals, the main moving parts of your story that you can't lose sight of, and they can really help potentially in pitching it to editors, publishers, um, and just when you're on a convention floor, how do you talk about your work? What do you remind yourself about your own work when you're sitting down to draw, right? I already mentioned this sort of post-it note, like note to yourself aspect. Uh, instead of like a note to yourself being like, oh, make sure, uh, I, right now I'm drawing a scene where there's bloodshot eyes, so that's what I'm thinking of. Like, oh, like, oh, make sure that, you know, when you ink this, that it looks really gross. Uh, it might be uh, you're writing yourself, these exercises help give yourself a more clear vision of a whole scene or just the whole story, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, so that's the focus. And so for this first one, it's really, it's a really simple formula. It shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes. So, um, but I, but I do think that these will be helpful and they will get a little bit more complicated and, um, hopefully build more conversation, uh, as we go on. Um, so I think that that's it. I'm coming in under 20 minutes, which is a minor miracle because as you can tell, I've got jabber jaws. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm going to uh, post this up with your assignment uh, <laughs> for for Tuesday. And I'm really, really super excited to see all of the new work in two weeks. If you have any other questions, concerns, just <laughs> want to chat, uh, you could hit me up uh, anything about the assignment. And if you haven't, if you have not yet scheduled a uh, in either one-on-one -on -one sort of intro face-to-face -face, uh, Google Hangout with me or, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one or small groups. I'm trying to organize those. I've already had a few. I have some scheduled for uh, for the coming week. And I will, um, in my email that I'm going to send out, I'll, I'll put out other potential uh, appointments if anyone wants to grab onto those. But that's it for now. Uh, so... <laughs> I guess I will, uh, well, hopefully I'll talk to you before uh, the next Rambly assignment video in a couple weeks. I might also find another way, uh, other fun ways to check in with you with these video segments, if you feel that they're helpful. And you could let me know. Are these helpful? Do you like them? Do you want to see less or more of my stupid face? Maybe I can just do the talking while Kate or Lee, you want to be on TV for a second? Maybe, what? Maybe it could just be my voice while you look at my dog. Would that be better? I'm a tortellini. I'm a gonna talk to you about the comic books. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks, guys.